right. Well, hello, friends. Uh, my name is William uh, Lindsay. I'm of Cree uh, Stony background, and I'm the director of the Office for uh, Aboriginal Peoples here at uh, Simon Fraser University, uh, which is uh, considered the sort of senior level Aboriginal office. Uh, although uh, in my work, my work, I very much take a team approach and kind of don't view myself as the big office, but. Uh, we are the office that's responsible for implementing the Aboriginal Strategic Plan for uh, Simon Fraser University. So uh, it's very much a, a leadership uh, position, and um, I uh, hone my leadership, ha have honed my leadership skills here very much over the last seven years, and uh, previously did so at the University of British Columbia for three years, also in a senior administrative role uh, as associate director there at the First Nations House of Learning and the coordinator of Aboriginal Student Services. And I was a college professor, public school teacher, AB instructor. Uh, so my uh, experience in education, Aboriginal education, uh, probably goes back a quarter century now uh, in this business. So, so I do have a lot of experience, uh, a lot of stories to share in various ways. Uh, and these will all be, uh, a lot of this will be explored in my doctoral thesis, which I'm currently working on, which uh, looks at uh, the topic of indigenizing the university through indigenous uh, leadership. <clears throat> and uh, so I do look at the role of uh, senior, the, the senior Aboriginal administrator in, in the universities in British Columbia, all 10 universities, and uh, tried to see uh, how we do our work and how we're successful, the challenges we face, how we overcome challenges, uh, and leadership skills that we develop in these roles and coping skills. Uh, there's all kinds of ways that we do this, and I look forward to talking to my other 10 colleagues uh, over the coming uh, three or four months as I do my research. I'm just writing my comp exams right now. So, <clears throat> yeah, so, so that's uh, kind of where I'm at and where I'm coming from. And uh, by the way, uh, if any of you would like to look at my uh, uh, completed comp exam, hopefully done in a month and a half, or my doctoral work as it progresses, uh, I'd be happy to share that with any of you. So you can just contact me here at Simon Fraser University. If I'll be happy to share that with you. So, yeah, so there's my introduction. Uh, so, what else would you like to know? <laughs> Well, when I joined the UBC team uh, in, in 2007, I was there till 2010, uh, I joined a, a well-established team there that had been doing its work for over 20 years. So I kind of fit into a production line of activity that had been long going on. So that was, you know, a very nice job to, to go into because you know what you have to do and you just do it. So some of you out there might be in roles like that as well. <clears throat> Uh, what's interesting in this role at, at Simon Fraser University uh, is my office was a brand new creation in 2010. So I was, I'm the first director of the uh, office. So, so that'll be in my obituary, by the way, first director of the Office for Aboriginal Peoples here at Simon Fraser University. Uh, so in that sense, uh, the, 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 f the field was, was clean. The slate was clean. It, it, was, uh, it was up to my office working with our community partners here to start shaking and baking and uh, making things happen. Uh, not from scratch, because I do want to give credit to uh, the people who had been here for a few years beforehand. Lisa Sterling, Dr. Lisa Sterling in education had put together the first uh, First Nations strategic plan for SFU <clears throat> in 2007. Uh, we had some professors here like Dr. Eldon Yellowhorn and Dr. Annie Ross who had been here for, for many years as our two kind of early faculty members here that were First Nations at SFU. <clears throat> Uh, we had the Indigenous Student Centre here that had been in operation for, for many years and the bridge programs in Surrey so, so, and the First Nations Studies program as well at the time which was long established. So, <clears throat> so we did have some things happening here but uh, they were kind of loosely based out there in different places and there wasn't really a way to kind of coordinate activities and get people talking regularly together and doing things. So, <clears throat> uh, so that's what we started to do right away is I brought a lot of best practices from some of the colleges and particular UBC where I worked at before. Um, <clears throat> so that's been one of my philosophies as well is, is to share. Um, there's a quote that hangs in my office and it's uh, share your knowledge uh, and it will contribute to your immortality or words to that effect. So, uh, so because I've uh, 
my colleagues at UBC and other universities were happy to share their knowledge with me about what they were doing from an Indigenous perspective. I'm happy to share as well what I do here. And I've been able to do that with universities across Canada and even to the United States. Because <clears throat> I think we've been doing a pretty good job here at SFU over the last seven years. Uh, team approach again, I shall stress that. Uh, but we're getting known for that now. So we are getting calls from uh, other universities around the country, around the continent, uh, asking us you know, what we're doing, how we did this, how we did that. <clears throat> and um, so I think that's a sign of good progress when other universities are starting to do that. So. <clears throat> Uh, but we have had uh, many successes here at SFU. Uh, we've been following the Aboriginal Strategic Plan quite, uh, quite successfully. Uh, we have a new Indigenous Student Centre, which is uh, second to none in the province, apart from its own building, which we're working on as well. <laughs> uh, we have the Aboriginal uh, MBA program, uh, sorry, Executive MBA program in Aboriginal Business and Leadership. They want to make sure I always say that correctly. So. That's another one of our signature internationally known programs. Uh, the First Nation Studies program evolved into a department. Um, our Faculty of Education has done a, a wonderful uh, role model job here at SFU for, I believe, the other faculties here and for other faculties in other universities as well. <coughs> uh, the Faculty of Education here, uh, they appointed a uh, sort of a senior admin person uh, in, in, the, uh, in the faculty, Ron Johnston from the local Squamish Nation, and he's taken the lead on doing a lot of the, the, the footwork, the hands-on, the administrative stuff that, that needs to get done in a faculty by an Aboriginal person if you want to indigenize that particular faculty. So we've had a uh, administ senior, senior type administrator person appointed in education. Uh, we have, uh, I believe, five uh, Indigenous faculty members in education. So that's a real powerhouse of academic uh, knowledge uh, from an indig Indigenous perspective therein. <clears throat> Uh, there's an Indigenous Advisory Committee in Education. Uh, they, they give direction to the faculty on Indigenous issues. And uh, we also have uh, two elders associated with the faculty as well. So, so if you're looking at a faculty that's really do, doing, I, I think, uh, trailblazing work <laughs> and that other universities could look at, it's our Faculty of Education here at SFU. So they're not the only ones doing this work. So other faculties are doing things as well that are or, you know, there can be very well spoken of, but uh, <clears throat> there is an example of a faculty that I think is a model for others, so, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I could go on about all kinds of different things. Uh, we have an Indigenous uh, coordinator in graduate studies now. He looks after Indigenous graduate students there. <clears throat> uh, he also looks after a sweat lodge, which is being built this year. Now, that was a four-year-long project to get that going, but we're gonna view that as a big cultural uh, learning tool here at the university for the community. <clears throat> Uh, we have a big drum as well here at SFU. We take that to events and boom it out and so people can hear the first peoples here on this campus now because um, you know, our, our office uh, working with some partners got together to make sure we could acquire a drum like this for the university. <clears throat> uh, we've created Aboriginal spaces on the other two campuses uh, down at the Harbour Centre campus downtown. There's an uh, Aboriginal gathering uh, space there now. And we're creating a space currently at Surrey right now to, to serve the community there, but in particular the Aboriginal Bridge Program students who are based in Surrey at this time. So, and so those are some real uh, good accomplishments. I could go on because uh, our annual report from, that I'm just putting together right now is about 25 pages long, so it lists all of these different things happening. So I could go on and on about the different things, but these are all on our office website as well. So. If any of you have any questions about our Aboriginal strategic plan, uh, which is a very good plan, our annual reports, uh, our annual newspaper issue that we put out on Aboriginal peoples here at SFU, uh, those things are all on our office website. So uh, yeah, so, so those are just some of the things that we have happening. <clears throat> and if I could just mention uh, three other things on the go right now, happening right now as we speak. Uh, we, we are uh, in the process of acquiring a log donation from the Squamish Nation, a lumber company associated with them, and we're gonna be creating a Coast Salish uh, welcoming figure for the university here on the Burnaby campus in the year ahead. Uh, one of those uh, welcoming figures, uh, we're, we're not sure of the exact design yet, but you know, that welcomes people <laughs> to the campus. So that's a real sign of, of progress up here. And uh, we're also working on a residential school memorial and educational outdoor classroom. As in the, this is gonna be in the Faculty of Education here. So uh, we're able to acquire some funds for this. Uh, we've been working with education, doing some consulting 
uh, with uh, the community and um, we're very excited about that. It's going to be a couple years in development, um, but uh, we've got some congratulations from Murray Sinclair uh, of the TRC a Commissioner uh, about this and, and others across the country. So, And uh, we're also looking at creating some signage around the campus in the coming uh, couple years. So acknowledging the traditional peoples and uh, providing some historic information about the local uh, First Nations people who, uh, you know, th this is their traditional territory. So we want to have people who come here to this university be able to, to see these plaques around the university that acknowledge this and, and perhaps say something about uh, the peoples and their names for the places where the campuses are at and some of the activities they did in the area, that sort of thing. So. Uh, so that's part of indigenization as well. So, so it's bringing students here, bringing faculty here, bringing elders here, establishing programs and services here at the university, uh, developing partnerships with local First Nations and uh, Métis peoples as well, making sure they're not forgotten, and Inuit peoples as well. We, we try to not forget our Inuit friends as well because we do have some students here at SFU that are Inuit, so <clears throat> we try to remember them and include them in various ways as well. So. Yeah, so that's just uh, some of the indigenization activities going on around here. And uh, as I said, I could go on, but uh, that's a start anyway. So. Well, first I'll mention some of the challenges here. Uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, it, it, it's a university that's only 50 years old or so, but uh, they have their traditions here. And uh, for the first 40 years or so, there was no real Aboriginal tradition <laughs> associated with that. So, so it's only been over the last 10 to 15 years that uh, Aboriginal peoples and issues have become sort of a presence here at the university. Uh, but it's been happening a lot now. Uh, so I can say with confidence and with surety, and I say this as a First Nations person, that we have a lot happening here at SFU now from an Aboriginal perspective. So. Uh, but it's still a challenge sometimes to overcome some of the old-time attitudes that are here. It's a challenge to uh, get some staff and faculty to, to cooperate with sort of Aboriginal initiatives and, and things that we hope to get started. So, and sometimes, there's out, unfortunately, sometimes there's outright resistance to, you know, to, to things that uh, you know, we, we try to do. I have to speak a bit diplomatically here because I do work <laughs> in this institution with, with people. and. Um, <clears throat> Uh, but, you know, I don't let those challenges uh, discourage me, you know. Uh, no today could mean maybe tomorrow and then yes a week's, in a week's time. And so that's sort of how we approach when we're told no to something. You know, we've turned many no's into yeses here at this university. And, um, you know, you try to build alliances, you try to do a good job, and uh, you win respect through time by doing, I believe, a good job. And uh, so our office and uh, the Aboriginal peoples that we work with here at this university have done a good job. And uh, so I think we're getting that respect now here in the community from senior administration on down. Uh, there's still work to do, but uh, you know that resistance has been there, and it's been, you know, a bit of a challenge overcoming it. But uh, you know, I haven't seen any of us be discouraged because of it. I think we're we're used to that, and you know, so so we keep our heads high while we while we do our work. I'd say the other serious challenge is fiscal. Uh, a lot of the Aboriginal offices here at SFU and departments are, you know, they, 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 they have a cash crunch problem. <laughs> you know, we're not given a lot of money to, to do the work that we, that we do. The reason is a lot of our offices are new here at SFU. Mine is uh, only, this is our seventh year. The Director of Indigenous uh, uh, Education, the Faculty of Education, his office is only three years old. Uh, the Indigenous Graduate Student Coordinator, his office is only two years old. So these offices are kind of given the beginning kind of budget to start off with. <clears throat> and, uh, but very quickly, uh, you start getting things done. And you can start doing things very quickly in this environment right now. And you find that your cash that you are given only goes so far. So, so there's always that cash uh, issue problem. So, uh, and, I, I'm, and I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm preaching to the converted out there amongst our, our community friends who probably face uh, similar issues. So. <clears throat> Um, you know, but what we try to do here is, is make a case for uh, increased funding. Uh, you know, so I can't speak for the other offices, but for my office, uh, we were doing so many things and being so successful at so many different initiatives that we, you know, went over budget. And uh, so I got called in on that and says, well, you know, I need some help here because we're doing all of these things. Can I put together a little proposal and show you what we're doing and how much more money we could use 
to at least you know match what we're doing now. And um, my boss uh, was kind enough to accept that, and he did increase our budget, you know, enough to cover to that point. <laughs> Uh, but now we're at the point where we could use another increase because we've expanded even more. So, <clears throat> so my advice to people who face that that fiscal challenge, that fiscal problem, is to uh, you know make an argument, make a case, you know m make a uh, a good argument for increased funding, and that that's all you can do. And you hope that through your good work, through through the things you're accomplishing, uh, that your supervisor will smile upon your efforts and reward you accordingly. If you lay out a plan, this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> You know, with this extra fund. So, uh, so we've been a little bit successful in that regard, but we're approaching another time where we need to ask again. So, yeah. So those are, I think, um, a couple of the, the biggest challenges that we do, you know, face here. Um, it is challenging as well, um, trying to get people together and, and be cooperative. Um, you know, a lot of the f uh, faculty, in particular, they do their own thing and they do their teaching, their research, their service work, and. You know, so it's it's a bit of a challenge sometimes getting them involved on things, um, but not always. You know, they're they're there when you really need them. <laughs> uh, but you know, you, you need to, you know, apply a little bit of friendly reminders to to get faculty more involved on uh, some of the Aboriginal uh, consultations and group things. Um, but for the important things, they're there. Um, other faculty, or uh, other Aboriginal staff around the university, we're kind of scattered throughout the university, so uh, it's a bit. Uh, more difficult getting us all together at times, but um, but I think we do pretty good in that regard uh, through email connection. I do try uh, very heavily to, to maintain connections to the Aboriginal staff and faculty here at SFU, and I have an open door policy, so no matter how busy I am, if an Aboriginal or anybody that comes into my office, my door is open, come in, what can I help you out with, what, what do you want to talk about? And uh, so that kind of helps as well uh, with regards to building those bridges and uh, trying to uh, build community. Um, and you hope everybody gets along, because everybody does have their own kind of leadership styles and ways of doing things, and, and you know, um, people, you know, want to be involved in things, and, <clears throat> you know, uh, so, it, so it's, it's a bit of a balancing act, trying to balance out all these different personalities and, and people, but, uh, you know, all you can do is do your best and, and try to be a good human being and apply some leadership uh, skills and strategies that you know, you've honed through the years to, to, to deal with these uh, different issues that come up, so, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, you raised the question of uh, leadership uh, skills. Um, I, I've really had to hone them on this job. <clears throat> like I said, when I was at UBC, I was an associate director and coordinator position, so I, my bosses there, they were the decision makers, they were the tip of the spear, so they were the ones who faced the slings and arrows of of university fortune at UBC. I didn't have to face that so much. I just did my job, followed orders, and away I went. Um, uh, but here, um, you know, I, I've had to be in that leadership position, be that, that tip of the spear, so to speak. And, um, you know, it's, I really learned a lot about myself in this job over the last uh, six years in a very positive way. Let me stress that. It's been very challenging at times, uh, but I've, I've loved this job. The challenges have been immense at times. Uh, but we've worked our way through challenges, and I would say that it's, uh, you know, I've honed leadership skills that, you know, I didn't have before, I didn't know I had, <laughs> and I realize now that I, I have. And, <clears throat> and so these are going to be in my uh, doctoral thesis. I'm going to list these, and, you know, so I just wrote a few down here so I don't forget them. But <clears throat> um, so if you're a leader, lead. So if you're in command, command. So sometimes you're a leader, you've got to make decisions. Well, you have to be the leader and do things. You know, and uh, make a decision that perhaps others aren't going to be happy about, but as a leader, you make those decisions. Uh, you have to have a vision or a role for your office. Uh, it's easy here at, in my job because we have the Aboriginal uh, Strategic Plan, of which I have a copy here. So, <clears throat> so this is my roadmap for getting things done. So uh, if you don't have one of these at your institution, uh, I would highly suggest that you do because uh, this has helped me immensely in my job. Uh, it helps me to, to, my vision is here. So I just follow what's in this plan, and away we go. <clears throat> uh, you have to develop or, or choose a set of personal ethics to live by. Um, you know, I've, in my research, I've discovered some uh, First Nations ones, the medicine wheel philosophy about looking after the mental, emotional, physical, spiritual part of yourself. To, to If you're in this kind of job, you have to be cognizant of those things. Um, the seven teachings, uh, it's from the East, but 
it's well known out here as well. And, and there's some good qualities in there about love and courage and, you know, forgiveness and kindness. You know, so, so you have to bring those kinds of uh, personal qualities into your job and apply them. You, you have to do that, eh? So, and uh, I have this, uh, this, that ha this hangs on my office wall, <laughs> which you can find online and order. It's a nice poster to have. It's instructions for life. Um, <clears throat> And it's attributed to the Dalai Lama. And, um, but, you know, I'm not a follower of the Dalai Lama, but, but I, I really like the thoughts that are, are expressed here. And these are gonna, some of these are going to be mentioned in my uh, doctoral thesis as well. So, <clears throat> so I'll just mention a few of them here. Uh, open your arms to change, but don't let go of your values. So don't be so strong-headed that you're not going to make change. But hold on to your values, what you, what you believe in as, as a person. Uh, remember that silence is sometimes the best answer. So when you hear, you get angry messages or angry emails or you're CC'd on things, uh, sometimes you don't have to reply. And your silence sends a message unto itself and can avoid problems. <laughs> um, spend some time alone every day. Um, so I love walking. Uh, that's my particular way of uh, solving issues that are, might be weighing on my mind. So every day I take time after work and on the weekends to go for an hour walk and, and get my exercise and fresh air. And, uh, Dur during those walks, uh, I, I sort out issues in my head. And by the, by the end of my walk, I always have it sorted out, whatever it is. So, so to you leaders out there, make sure you get your exercise and the kind of exercise that keeps you healthy uh, physically, but also uh, mentally as well, because uh, you can sort out a lot of issues when you spend some time alone and uh, get your exercise. <clears throat> uh, when you lose, don't lose the lesson. So you're not going to win all the time. Uh, when you're trying to do jobs like what we have to do, but uh, if you do lose, there's lessons that you can learn from it, so don't, don't lose those lessons. <clears throat> um, just a couple other things I'll mention here. Uh, I mentioned this one already. Share your knowledge. It's a way to achieve immortality, so I never mind sharing my knowledge. Others have been kind enough to share their knowledge with me through the years, so whenever I get a call or an email saying, William, how did you do this, or do you have any policy on this, or... Uh, I'm always happy to take the time to, to share that information with my colleagues across the province and uh, across, across the country. <clears throat> and uh, the final one I'll mention is know the rules properly so you may know how to break them properly. <laughs> so sometimes knowing the rules, you can find a way to work with the rules to work around them and make things happen that, um, you know, that, um, <clears throat> I don't want to give specific examples, but there are some examples where I've had to learn certain rules, and then, I, and then because I learned those rules well, I was able to deal with difficult situations more on my terms. So, uh, so those are just some, uh, some lessons for life, leadership lessons that I've learned. And uh, as I said, this hangs in my office. So, you know, every day, take a little break at the computer, grab a coffee, look up at the wall, look at some of these lessons. <clears throat> Or I might be in a situation where one of these lessons applies and I'll just look at it and, and apply it. And so having some kind of guidance like that um, you know, is, is what you need. <clears throat> uh, you need to consult in this role as well. If you're in the First Nations role, you do need to consult. Uh, but I found you don't need to consult with everybody. You know, if we consult it with everybody, it's going to take uh, two years to get something done. You know, pick some representative people from staff, faculty, students, elders, and, and consult with those guys and, and, and get their input on something. And then you as a leader go ahead and, and get something done and let people know out there that you're doing this and, and that you've got consultation from these uh, various groups. So, uh, so you do need to consult, but you don't have to waste a lot of time consulting with, with everybody. <clears throat> Uh, make the tough decisions as well. Sometimes you do have to make tough decisions and have tough conversations with people as well. You know, I'm kind of a shy person by nature, so it's, you know, it's, taken, it's been a bit of a learning curve to be able to, you know, to talk to people um, sternly and directly when that kind of conversation was needed. So, uh, but I've I had to learn how to do that, so I know that if I can do it, uh, those out there who might feel they're a bit shy can uh, learn how to do that as well. <clears throat> and the last leadership quality I'll mention is make it your goal to make most of the people happy most of the time. <clears throat> Uh, a sure recipe for failure is to try to make everybody happy all the time, and that's concerning the Aboriginal community or the overall university community or educational community that you're a part of. So, <clears throat> so um, I, I feel that in my job, most of the people are happy with what I'm doing most of the time, so I think that's the best you can hope for. Uh, don't try to make everybody happy all the time because it ain't going to happen. 
On the other hand, you don't want to have uh, everybody unhappy most of the time. <laughs> so you want to, you know, judge that accordingly as well. So, so those are just some leadership philosophies that I, I follow, and uh, they are mentioned in my doctoral uh, thesis as well. <clears throat> and there are a couple of uh, uh, famous uh, phrases and that I, I, I bring into my work as well. One is by Desmond Tutu, who said uh, at a conference in the early 2000s, uh, he lived through the apartheid system in South Africa and fought against it. And he said, uh, don't raise your voice and prove your argument. So, uh, so I've only raised my voice uh, once here on this job in seven years, which isn't too bad. Uh, I, I just got tired of something, unreasonableness, racism, um, discrimination, uh, bullshit, uh, and I lost it. I didn't say anything I shouldn't have said, uh, but my temper flared, and um, you know that was the only time in seven years here, so that's not bad. Uh, but I've had to improve my argument countless times and have turned uh, no's into yeses uh, through doing that, uh, potential failures into successes by improving arguments. So, so that's one phrase to live by. Uh, another one I live by is, <clears throat> is credited to Winston Churchill, but uh, he said, if you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> so in a humorous way, that means, hey, if you're going through a tough time, just keep plugging away. You know, plugging away at the situation or plugging away at your job. And it's my experience that tough situations, as tough as they are, and I've been through some tough ones, they, they generally, you know, will just dissipate or, or disappear or not be an issue anymore. So just keep your nose to the grindstone. Uh, keep going and uh, things will improve. So. Uh, so these are just some of the leadership uh, philosophies and, and phrases and traditions and sayings that um, you know I, I've, I use in my work, and uh, they they've served me well, and you know done me a, a shy kid off the, the reserve, uh, inner city kid too. You know these philosophies I've I've latched onto through the years have uh, you know served me very well on this job. So um, so you know some of these things can help you out there. I, I hope they can. Um, but as I said, if you want more information about any of this stuff, it will be in my doctoral thesis uh, and comp exams, which I'm writing right now. So if you want access to these, I'd be happy to share them with you. If you want to, if you want to send me send me an email about that. So yeah. <clears throat> so how's that? <laughs>High school graduates that we have coming from the Aboriginal community and in, in BC it's like 60% now. Uh, we have a mandate from the government to indigenize the curriculum and the public school level now. Uh, so that's going to be very exciting and going to lead to increased graduation rates. So I'm very hopeful about that. In my work here at SFU uh, I see many young Aboriginal people interested in the sciences and technologies and mathematics, things like that. Uh, when I was growing up that, that just didn't happen. <laughs> but now I see you know, we have a summer math camp for Aboriginal youth here, and uh, you know, dozens of kids going through the camp successfully. Like, wow, it's just to me that's really cool to see kids, Aboriginal kids, involved in these areas, and and just the numbers of students we have here at SFU. Uh, our current numbers, I think, our, our numbers are going to come out this year uh, for last year, uh, but we should be between 650, 700 Aboriginal students here at SFU now, including. Uh, I'm hoping we across the 150 threshold for graduate students here coming up. So, uh, so our, our numbers are, are going up, um, they're, they're steady. We have, and the numbers of graduates as well. We've had some very large graduating classes over the last few years of my time here. So, so we have not just these big numbers coming to university, but uh, graduating now. And they're going out there and working. And, and I know, because I used to be a teacher, college and high school, and, and I've and I, I taught a, an earlier generation of students who are now uh, policemen and social workers, teachers, uh, doctors, lawyers, uh, uh, police officers uh, out there working, and they're Aboriginal people. <laughs> and uh, that was a generation ago now, 1990s, early 2000s, when I was doing that. <coughs> so I know since we've had all these classes of graduating people, so I just know that our Aboriginal people are out there in the communities working in all of these uh, key professional areas and, the, and their role models for our youth, their role models for their family members. So, And uh, you know, now we have the TRC recommendations, uh, the calls to action, the, the uh, <coughs> work of Reconciliation Canada. So there's a knowledge about their, out there about Aboriginal peoples and, and residential schools and history and colonialism and, and what it did and, 
a recognition by the federal government about these things now and, 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 and you know, a promise by the government, current government, that they're going to be following through on, on respecting Aboriginal peoples and treaties and the TRC calls to action. So, you know, so it's a very exciting time in this country, not just here at SFU, but uh, uh, for people across the province and across the country. So, I, I, yeah, I'm just very excited about all of this. And um, what's my hope? Um, well, um, I, I'd, I'd like personal hope on this job. I'd like to see a, a longhouse structure of some kind built up here on the Burnaby campus to match what is happening on some of the other big universities. We're working on that. Um, and uh, I'd like to see our graduation rates from high school uh, equal those of the uh, rest of the non-Aboriginal population and then surpass it. <coughs> I know we have that ability. Yeah, so. So, so that's, that's what my hopes and dreams are.